Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back in Sim Airport. Although, as you might notice, it's a slightly different Sim Airport. Yes, we've got new people. Or should I say, old people. Uh, yes, what the developers have been done, have, have done, have done, have been doing since the last major release. Uh, about a couple of months ago now, I think it was. Um, if you're following the discussions on the Edge branch, uh, on the Steam forums, uh, you'll have noticed they've been very, very busy over that time, uh, working out uh, bugs, fixing bugs, adding new features, enhancing existing features, uh, and putting out lots of versions on the edge branch of the game for sort of the, 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 the bleeding edge, the, the really sort of engaged um, early adopters of the game uh, to have a play with and check out. And in the last couple of weeks, uh, towards the end of June here, They've moved that version to Experimental, which is the version I'm working on for this uh, Let's Play. And it's looking pretty solid, and they're looking quite hopeful. They've got rid of all the big bugs, and all the sort of new features basically work. Uh, so it's just a matter of seeing how the community uh, plays with them, how the community uh, responds to them by feedback and so on, and what they need to change. And that should come to the default branch uh, fairly soon-ish. How soon Sue is soon? I've no idea, but it's looking fairly good for, for quite soon. Why do I say these are old people? Because one thing they put in to the game, uh, which is again following on from a lot of con customer feedback, is people like the sprites, the, the PAX sprites, the passenger sprites uh, that the game had when it first came out to early access. Um, so these are in fact the original sprites, more or less. Uh, as you can see, the one thing they don't have is legs. Now, it's oddly enough, they put the new sprites into the game, which is what I've been playing with up till now, uh, because they had better performance, because they, they didn't impact so much uh, on the game's performance. Uh, so we will see. Uh, I'm not particularly tra attached to these sprites. They are rather cute, though, I have to admit, um, like the, the early, really early adopters were. Uh, so I may switch back to the new sprite style uh, at some point, uh, but for, for the time being, as long as performance is good, I'll stay with these, because they, they are just rather cute. Uh, so when you start a game, or when you play a game, that's an option you have to decide which version sprites you want, version 1 or version 2. And they've also put in, depending on your PC uh, capabilities, uh, options for different rendering styles, or different rendering algorithms. Uh, so if performance is an issue you may find that helps as well but th yeah I'm afraid this is going to be a slightly longer and slightly uh, mixed up episode today I had promised baggage and we will get to baggage today but I thought seeing as we've got a, a lot of really interesting and exciting and funky new features in the game I'll spend a few minutes to start with just going through these new features so the choice of sprites is one thing uh, they've also enhanced the staff scheduling uh, then what you can do now is you don't have a sh the, you have the same shift patterns that you've always had, but you can actually assign different types of staff uh, throughout the day on those shifts. So, for example, at uh, night time, night time, click it there. Um, I don't actually need anybody in the airport, uh, including janitors. So I can now actually tell my janitors, go home. The day is finished. Um, for security staff, uh, again, nobody works at night. Uh, the early shift, we don't have any security at the early shift, but I do have uh, my, uh, I don't have anybody on the early, I, I thought I did have staff on the early shift. I'm sure these ticket people were here on the early shift. Oh, is this something that's that's gone awry in the save game thing? Ooh, that could be that could be what's going on because early is when the first passengers passengers start arriving for the daytime flights uh, so I haven't got any security on then either no oh, I'm gonna have to go back and, and change all this aren't I uh, peak hours yes yeah, it's, it's got my two coffee people uh, and bar people there that's that's fine uh, and both in both coffee shops, uh, the, are they coffee shops. They are coffee shops, aren't they? Cafe kiosks uh, inside and outside the secure area. Okay, so we're going to have to play with. Now, the interesting thing about janitors 
not only can you schedule them at different points a day, but they've added patrols. So now you can leave it like it was previously and the janitors will just find their way around the airport and go and pick up rubbish, empty the, the dustbins, the trash bins or whatever you want to call them and take them out here to the garbage zone. But what you can do is you can set up routes for the patrols to follow uh, and you can either set them up uh, so you just sort of set up a pattern here uh, to uh, to there to there and they follow it round and you can either say follow this route but if you see any rubbish way over here pick it up and deal with it um, which might be fine if you've got good or a smallish airport but if you've got a larger airport you don't necessarily want your janitors running off to the middle of uh, nowhere uh, and then getting back on their assigned route so you can pack, actually set up areas of concern so when you set up uh, the next waypoint in their route you can define uh, that area you can either give it a very large radius or quite a small radius and they will only then notice a cleaning job within that blue area um, so you've got very fine control over your janitors now I'm not going to do that here uh, because um, <laughs> I don't have time to do that but I will do that at some point probably off camera uh, from there now the other exciting thing they've done is they've changed the way you talk to airlines well actually no if I start here first airline interest that's come down significantly from the previous episodes it was usually around 70 percent it's gone right down now and I suspect the reason for that is they've now got this communication option here a communication need which I think should apply pretty much to every airline the other nice thing here is they've color coded these bars I don't think they were color coded previously uh, but they've also actually now put arrows on here so you can see which direction uh, the satisfaction is going in so if they're becoming more satisfied with your fuel uh, pricing the arrow is green going to the right if they're less than happy about the communication you have with their airline executives the arrow is going uh, to the left so it's kind of orange there communication how do you establish communication you might ask I will tell you you select a rep you can actually assign a member of your own admin staff to communicate with that airline and you can in fact assign several of your admin staff to talk to the airline now if you're using one of your main admin roles the finance officer the operating officer the technical officer and so on you can assign them to an airline but you can also and this will be very important while you're still researching your um, following the research path if you haven't done all the research of technology you may want to decide how much they prioritize talking to the airline over doing research so if I say that spends 80% of the time talking to the airline and not doing research I'm not going to get a lot done on my technical research tree so you might not want to assign these guys until you're pretty much at the end of all the research you want. So if you're not assigning one of these guys, who could you assign? You know what, I'll tell you that as well. What you do is you come here, manage admin staff, we have a new classification of admin staff, the sales rep. Now the interesting thing about the sales rep is unlike the other sort of specific job types, the finance officer, the technical officer and so on, is those job type uh, admin staff uh, actually have bonuses when they're talking to an airline. Why would they need bonuses? Because you negotiate with an airline to get better deals. So depending on what sort of deal you want to do with the airline, you might assign a particular type of uh, admin or manager, executive type. You know, chief financial officer, for example, will increase, it says here, the amount the airline is willing to pay in negotiations because their their head is is tuned to accounting and finance they will get a better deal you'll get more money out of the airline for providing the service than you would if another sales rep for example was talking to the airline now the important thing is although these guys have bonuses your average sales rep doesn't so they're just a guy who represents you and talks to the airline so uh, if that's all you need is someone to talk to the airline then get a sales rep 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire a sales rep. And my most favoured airline at the moment, I think the one I've got most flights with, yep, yeah, is Air Malta. I've got seven flights. So I will assign my rep, uh, where is sales rep, I'll assign him to talk to Air Malta. Now hopefully that should increase my communication uh, rating with that airline. I mentioned negotiations earlier. Uh, what's coming on there is if you go to negotiation, first off you actually have to have at least eight flights uh, from that airline. Uh, so I will do that with Air Malta fairly soon because I do have spaces in my schedule as you can see here on the large gate. I've got a good few slots there that we can fill. Well, two or three at least. <laughs> uh, I can feel so I can put another Air Malta flight in there. And that means I can start negotiations. But I'm not going to do that for a while yet because negotiations involve all sorts of interesting things in terms of pricing for your flights, I think. I've not actually done this, so I'm kind of guessing from what I've seen of the screens I've had a look at before I started the recording. Uh, you can have exclusive gate access. You can have exclusive shops or stores exclusive access to first class lounges and stuff so you can have all sorts of things and you can actually say I'll give you a first class lounge and an exclusive shopping area if you give me another four flights so that's where the negotiation is going and that's going to be important later in the game it's not going to be ready for me yet I'm not going to have an airport infrastructure ready to support that yet so we're going to put that to one side for the moment but I will say, when it comes to negotiating, where do you negotiate? In a meeting room. A meeting room, you ask? Well, yes. And that's exactly what we have. We have the new conference room zone. And that needs to be... What I'm going to do, in fact, because I have space here to build out my office area, which I've sort of been using here. But I think it might be nicer, actually, to relocate that... Uh, to an upper floor so I might actually put them at the front of this air uh, the first floor here you'll have a conference room with a conference table and a number of seats and that's where when you get into negotiations with an airline your reps and their representatives come together and sort of thrash out a new deal which suits you best now the thing about the conference area is that it kind of means that the airline representatives the airline uh, visitors will probably want to go somewhere where only your staff would normally go. Now, what that means is they're not staff, so they can't get through the staff door, door here. They can only get through ordinary doors. But you want to enable them to get through, but not ordinary passengers. So we've got another third class, another type, a third class, that's actually right, a third class of person visiting the airport. You've got staff and pilots, You've got passengers traveling and you've now got airline executives and they will have access to your conference room. And what you will do there is you'll set up a visitor's reception area. What that does is, if in fact I can do that, uh, I can do that briefly here actually. Shall I do that just to show you how it works? Uh, if I, whoops, let's just stick a door. A door in there. I'm not going to use this because I'm putting me baggage carousels and conveyors in here. Uh, so this, this is just an, an exercise to see what would happen. If I zone that up as a visitor's reception, if I put that, say, there. Okay. Now, at the moment, this area is... Actually, if I... You know, I Probably need to get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. Oh no, that comes as protected. Yeah, the staff door means that's protected. What what it will do is with a visitors area, a visitors reception area here, is it will change anything accessible from behind that as being a secure area. Actually, I'm not sure this will work because of the baggage carousels there. No. So what would happen is if I put a... I will need to replace this staff door here with an ordinary door. 
and then anything behind there would then become secure. And how do airline executives get into a uh, secure area? They do it, of course, with a visitor's uh, reception desk. So you put a reception desk in there, manned by a member of security, and that will then issue the airline executives with a pass, allowing them to get into this secure area, into the conference area. We will see this work at some point. I'm not going to do it today because we've got more important stuff to do. Uh, actually, stuff that's useful to, <laughs> to the game. Uh, so let's take that out there. We don't want that. After all, and in fact, we'll put a... Uh, we'll take that. Can I just put a wall back in there? No, I've got to dismantle the door first, haven't I? Oh, darn it. <laughs> so the guys will do that. I'll put the wall back. So that's some of the things we'll see coming up fairly soon in the default branch. Um, and what else is there? There's probably lots of other stuff which I've not mentioned. Um, but we'll get into that uh, as and when we need to. Oh, the other thing you can do with negotiations is you can get early morning flights yes so this whole part of the day has been excluded up till now you've not been able to get any flights into your airport early in the morning following negotiations you'll be able to do that oh the other fight oh, sorry the other final thing i will say before we get into uh, the game proper uh, let's put that wall back is They've added a new sort of uh, objectives kind of system into the game. So when you start a new game, you can either run the game, uh, as I've been doing, uh, just off a huge great loan, and then you build it as you wish, uh, at, at, and you've got complete freedom. What you could do alternatively when you start a new game is run it using government grants. So your initial loan is reduced somewhat, but you'll then get an upfront gift, a grant from the government to build certain parts of the airport. So, for example, the basic airport, you just need ticketing, security, gate, and that's it kind of thing. You need to actually have an airport where people can buy a ticket, get through, get onto a plane. And if you achieve that, you'll get more money from the government, and you'll also then get access to specific assets like the air traffic control tower. So you won't be able to build this thing until you've actually achieved a certain set of objectives for that grant. And they kind of provide an enhanced career mode, as it were, in the game. Uh, so you first get the, air, the airport built, you have a certain number of passengers, certain types of facilities, and that then finishes off the basic airport track, as they call it. And you then go on to a, a, a other objectives in terms of numbers of passengers, numbers of flights, that sort of thing. So it sort of helps sort of guide you as it were into designing an airport uh, so it's, it's a nice sort of way of fitting in objectives achievements into the game uh, making it perhaps more like a proper career kind of mode than we have at the moment so that's it right let's get on to this uh, stop flashing at me I don't want a security zone oh I, I, this is I think this is one of the new things in the game um, the security zone isn't m manned anymore so uh, Although it's still secure, so it's flashing at me. Yeah, I think it's because it's not manned. That's the problem. Right, baggage. Now, a couple of things I have changed since you were last with me. I've run the game on for a day or so, so I've racked up some more money. Uh, I'm going to put the baggage collection point here. So my trucks, my baggage trucks will collect it from here and deliver it to the airport gates. Um, now the baggage car, the I keep trying to call them, try keep trying to call them carousels. They're not. They're conveyors. The conveyors need to be underground. Or do they need to be? Actually, that's a very good point. They don't, and that's because as part of this new update, dun, 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 we've got two new baggage carousels. The existing one, where the baggage takes the carousel takes baggage from a conveyor running underground. We have one now where the baggage carousel will take a conveyor coming down from above. And also, and this perhaps is particularly like useful if you're building a small kind of local airport um, type kind of style, 
where you just have bar baggage coming in from through the door, <laughs> through the wall. Uh, so you can have a conveyor loading baggage from the aircraft onto the carousel on the same level. So that's a nice extra feature they've put into into the game. Again, responding to uh, user feedback. Right, so my baggage uh, depots, it's called, is going to be uh, along here, I think. Now, to fit that in there, I've had to move my, f my fuel pipe a bit as well, because it used to run uh, along here. Uh, but that got in the way. I could actually build my conveyors two levels underground to get around that, but I couldn't be bothered. So I've moved my fuel pipe out of the way so I can build my conveyor network uh, down here without uh, crashing into the fuel pipes. So that, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Okay, so uh, let's build that, uh, that depot to start with. Um, now the tooltip says pink and blue outbound only to hubs uh, endpoint is inbound from hubs attached to ticketing right so this but I don't know if I can see blue and pink I've not been able to make that out on here um, well, I've, I've no idea really uh, if I put that actually what I'll do You'll notice I've actually built, I don't think I did this in the last episode, I've built some more road uh, in the game. Uh, just to keep the um, the vehicles off the taxiways, basically. So they actually follow the road round when they go to the different gates to deliver, to deliver fuel, or indeed, shortly, to deliver uh, luggage. So if we build that along there, I think... Let's get them building that. Then I can build the luggage uh, depot along here, I think, as well. How long does that need to be? If I build it there, because that... Yes, this vertical magenta line is, is the fuel pipe. So I should be able to build it there. I think that should be okay. Done. I'm always very nervous about this because <laughs> there's a lot of conveyors need to be threaded underground to, to achieve this. So let's get the uh, outgoing luggage dealt with first. So uh, how actually let's I do that there. Now we need a conveyor down transfer. Okay. There, I think. Do I need to build... I'm going to build it to the scenario we've got at the moment. So just these four ticketing desks. So that should then place... Yeah. I should then need the conveyor belt downstairs. That should all link up. Actually, I'm just hoping, because I didn't have all those early morning staff on, on that shift. But, uh, oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, I forgot that. <laughs> My staff can't get into their offices now because they can't clamber over the conveyor belt. <laughs> Don't! Uh, okay, so what we'll need to do is put a staff door. Let's search for it. Quickest way for me to find it. In here. That's it. And then I can uh, dismantle this bit of wall here. I think well, that is that. Uh, is that going to let people in there? I'm not sure it will. I'm not sure it will. No, uh, actually, it might. Let's see. No, they still can't get in. They can't get through that gap. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? 
Right, it looks like we're going to have to cut down the size of the male restroom for the moment. I'm sorry, chaps. Um, I need to get rid of that plant first, don't I? I hadn't expect <laughs> I hadn't expected to have this. I think when I first uh, played with doing this to see how I could lay things out, I actually had the conveyor belt running directly against the back of the ticket desks. So I could allow them to enter along here. But that, that just, although it works, it's aesthetically wrong. <laughs> it just doesn't work aesthetically. Uh, because you wouldn't have your staff running around behind the conveyor belts. I mean, that'd be a security risk, if nothing else, wouldn't it? So if I build a wall there... What if I take that wall? Oh, okay, so they've now got access. But... How broken is my male toilet here? Will this bit of extra wall suit it? Work for it? I'm hoping it will. I could put that plant back in there, couldn't I? Let's do that. Uh, decor. I think it was little black one, wasn't it? Yeah, one of those. Let's put you in there. Okay. Put that uh, tile back. Come on, chaps, build this extra bit of wall. You don't worry about the plant. <laughs> I know they've got the plant in stock, but... Is that... Uh, has that done it? Yes. Right. Excellent. Okay. So... Uh, we need to then build. Uh, I need to go down, not up. So there's our conveyor belt. And. Uh, right. Ah, okay, so that's where I need to. Con okay, so we need to connect this to that. Um, is that the wrong way around? Do you think? Would you rather have it the other way around? I'm not sure, we'll see how we go, but I'm going to need to put in some foundations in order to get all this to uh, to work. So, let's not do it there, let's do it from there. We're going to need more than that, we'll put that in there to start with. What we're going to need is a hub, a baggage hub to go in here to connect all these ticket desks to the uh, to the depot there to deliver don't zoom in unnecessarily to deliver the luggage to the uh, to the baggage carriers okay and we'll put our baggage claim here uh, well, that's from below uh, I think that's coming in from the top, isn't it, there. So we'll put you there. Should we put you there? Yeah, let's put you there. Uh, we, I will put in two baggage carousels. Uh, I just want to put one in just so I'll get an idea of where the conveyor's belts need to go. Right, let's get these guys building. Come on, chaps. Oh, heck, fuel is getting cheap again. I will set this to automatic buy buying uh, shortly, because uh, I'm spending far too much time um, looking at the fuel price. Yeah, that's fine. It's, the price has gone down a little bit again. I'm still selling it at a vastly inflated $1.70. $1 uh, but I'll, I'll organise that more more astutely, more automatically uh, going forward. Once we've got baggage sorted out and we get some... Recover the money we spend on this, uh, we'll do that then. Okay, we've got you built. Now we need a hub in here. And... 
Oh, that'll work, I think. Come on, finish finish building the wall. Now, hopefully I should be able to put this in place. Ah, right, there we go. Uh, so... I think that will do. Okay. Let's get rid of some of this wall. I uh, don't need you there. don't need you there. And I certainly don't want you there. Let's get rid of that plannings area as well. That's just confusing the heck out of me. Okay. Ah, right. Am I going to have a problem with that fuel again? I, 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 I think I might. Or do I? Let's make conveyor. Oh no, there's, there's, that's okay. That's fine. No, that's fine. Because the belt goes there. If we build you to there. You... Okay. Oh yeah, you can't have two connections <laughs> going to the same conveyor. Because it thinks they're coming in from different places or they need to go to different places. So if we put you in there. No, you can't do that. Okay. And we will... Actually, if we build that foundation out a bit more yeah and we can have uh, have a, a simpler way of connecting the uh, the incoming luggage to, to the hub there okay this is looking good Mantle that wall there, and some more conveyor. Actually, no, we won't do it that way. Stop that, stop that, let's cancel that. What we can do is we can change that to a producer. And that to a consumer no that doesn't no no I don't like that that's going the wrong way so what we want to do we want to dismantle that uh, that there and we'll send the conveyor instead up there I think it's just still waiting to uh, dismantle the old conveyor before it lets me do that connection yes oh. hang on did, did I dismantle the, the hub did I did, oh for goodness sakes I did <laughs> <laughs> Matt's a blithering idiot. That's what he is. Ah. Now I can't put it in because... Oh. Cancel that. Right. Should we try again? Right. I think that works. Okay. Right. We'll get the chaps back to rebuild that. <laughs> okay. So, conveyor belts. Conveyor. Right. Uh, so, you're going to go in there, and you're going to go in there. But, I need to change you to a consumer and you to a producer and I should then be able to put that conveyor there right yeah the problem was is um, the way I had it around before it was 
more difficult to get the baggage coming back from the planes into the into the hub there. So we put you there. Okay, what we've got to do uh, is send all that luggage down there. So it's a nice straight bit of conveyor. However, what I want to do, as I said earlier, is I actually want to put in two baggage hubs here. Baggage carousels, rather. So, and that means I need another hub so it can differentiate the luggage coming in um, and determine which carousel it should go on. But like it does in a real airport. Uh, so yes, carousel, carousel, that's what we're looking for. So we're going to place you there. There, that's it. And the trick then, although it builds the uh, underground foundation for some objects, it doesn't build it for conveyors, uh, or indeed hubs, I think, either. So we're going to need a lot more foundation to get from there to there. So how much do you reckon we're going to need? Well, I think we should take... And I can never remember how wide this needs to be. So we might need two conveyor belt streams. And they need to be at least one apart. They can't, they can't run so exactly side by side. There needs to be a gap between them. So I think five should do, I think. So if we take you down there. And then build... The hub can probably go in there, I reckon. Okay. The thing is here... Aha! Uh -huh. Right, so it looks like our ticketing desks are attached to the depot okay. So we need to assign that to... I'll assign it to these gates to start with. I will assign it to the large gate as well, once we've got everything else sorted out. So that's assigned there. We need two more vehicles. They're going to be the baggage cars. Now two, I think from what I've played with previously, will handle uh, those three small gates without too much trouble at all. Uh, but sending it luggage to and from that fourth gate will need a third car. And I don't have room for that in this hangar, so we're going to need to build another hangar as well somewhere over here is what we will do. Ah, right. What do you mean? Oh, zero, wrong. I wanted to know what that means. <laughs> no idea what that means. Okay. Uh, oh, we're, we're still late night, so we're, we're tidying up, basically. So there should be no... no passengers, no luggage to go through. Oh, that's interesting. Is there not? All our flights have gone through, have they? That's that's impressive. They did. Oh, yeah, because I had to move. Yeah, we had a flight that that's could stay until midnight, and that that didn't work very well because I messed up. <laughs> okay, let's see um, how our not the flight status. Uh, I want a profit. That's what I'm after. Uh, profit for yesterday. We lost only eighty grand. Uh, considering I spent over 300 on materials, we lost slightly on fuel. That's disappointing, but then I did spend money on fuel yesterday, so... Perfect Ops, we're back. Excellent. <laughs> that's good to know. Credit report, uh, 624, that's going up, I think. So, bank loans, yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, right, so, how are we doing here? Right, this is all looking fine, I think. So I'm not sure when I'll be able to get uh, get those walls out of the way. Let's uh, get them moving a bit faster, shall we? The other thing I've done, um, you probably noticed that the hell of confusion I had last time <laughs> trying to get a one-way system around this large gate. In uh, outgoing passengers, We'll go past the uh, gate desks and that way. 
and incoming passengers would come out this way uh, and they would not mix. I tried to use security gates, that was entirely inappropriate. It works here simply because, uh, because it works. But what I did, uh, I started researching one-way paths and that's the way to do it properly. So what we'll actually do here is if we put in uh, the one-way paths, where, I don't know where they are, one-way path, there it is. So if we put uh, that in there and there, and put that, actually if we can dismantle those gates, Uh, dismantle, that's what we're doing, and put one-way paths in there instead. Where, where, um, where are they? Are they under ops? One-way paths, they are good. So put that in there. That should mean that only people coming in past the gates can get in that way. Oh, it works! Did you see that? Beautifully. Right. Uh, I'll do more one-way paths uh, elsewhere in the airport where it makes sense. Um, but I'm glad I got that sorted out eventually. And apologise for the confusion that I caused, I had, in the end of the last episode. OK, we're nearly ready to complete our luggage system. OK. Right, we're going to... Oh, we need to dismantle this as well. These, these walls here. Not that... Uh, that outer one. And that. Okay. Right, let's slow this down a little bit. Uh, it's utilities. So we're going to put another hub in here. That should work fine. Um, that's a two. Ah, oh, that's ah, oh, that's fine. That's all I need. Hub to hub. So the luggage is coming in from. Oh look, luggage. Oh, that's a beautiful sight, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's a simple pleasures. Uh, right, yeah. So, uh, so we'll come in uh, here, and it'll go out on this hub to hub link here. Do I need two-way converters? I don't. I think I can use a single... Oh, I need two-way, do I, for that? Yes, apparently I do. Though, of course, the luggage isn't going two-way at all. I suppose it, it could. If you were going hub-to-hub -hub on a larger, more sophisticated airport setup. And we've got the two producer outlets there. You go there, you go there. That then should be the entirety of the baggage handling system as it stands at the moment. Excellent. Oh, and there's the first baggage cart. And is he going to be delivering? Or, or he's probably, oh, and there's the other one. So he's probably taking luggage out of... Yep, that was out of the aircraft. Now he's putting luggage coming into the baggage cart and back to the plane. Ooh, and there it is with the carousel. Ladies and gentlemen, we have luggage control. Right, uh, so... Finally, uh, let's build that aircraft hangar out there and get a third. Um, <laughs> I'll find my way around this menu at one point, at uh, one time rather. Uh, we'll put another medium that handles three vehicles, that's fine. So we'll put you there. Uh, once we've got that built, uh, we can then uh, assign this depot as well to the, the fourth gate. That's fine. Oh, our profit's looking good already today. We're already 64 grand up. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. 
Okay. All right. The only thing I'm unhappy about is the fact that I can't get properly large aircraft to this gate. To do that, as I think I discussed in the last episode, I need an even larger runway. So the next episode will be expanding the runway. So we're going to take this, make it bigger. So this is a short runway, 90, um, and that handles all the smaller aircraft. Uh, the bigger one, 120 here, handles a couple of aircraft, larger aircraft, but not the really big ones that give us proper numbers uh, to our air aircraft. So uh, we need the longer one there. So we will do that uh, in the next episode. Actually, just looking at, uh, as my air altar has gone up to 61. Oh, look at that. Can we, these these tooltips do get in the way sometimes. So the communication's gone up substantially because I've got one agent, one rep talking to them. Well, that's that's impressive. Right. Uh, actually, I could change that road as well. Ah, okay. Right. So we've got our vehicle there. We'll put in another baggage car there, and also assign this depot to our big gate. And one final little thing before we say goodbye is I will. Uh, extend the road so it goes around like that I'm not sure it makes any odds at all but uh, it just looks nicer it's a more complete <laughs> road network anyway there we are um, objective achieved we have baggage control in my little airport um, and we've seen uh, some of the new features that are coming up in the game uh, currently in the experimental branch, on the edge branch as well, obviously, because that gets everything first. Uh, but they're here and looking good in uh, experimental. They'll be coming to default soon, possibly before the next video is out. We shall see. Hopefully that, that's the case. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you have, it'd be great if you would just give us a little bit of a thumbs up. Thumbs up, that'd be wonderful. A little bit of a like. Even better, though, if you've got any thoughts recommendations, suggestions, criticisms even of what I'm doing with this airport just drop a note into the comments box below that would be awesome and of course if you've not done so already please do subscribe to the channel and that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series but from me Ajax Post here in Air Sim Airport <laughs> I'll see you again soon until then bye bye for now